Hey guys, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today I'm taking a look at the Polaroid 600. Polaroid had released the SX-70 in the 1970s, and that was followed by the cheaper, more accessible Polaroid One Step, which also took the SX-70 film. But in the 1980s, Polaroid introduced a brand new film type and camera, the Polaroid 600 series. Now these cameras are a little bit more in line with the Polaroid One Steps. They're plastic as opposed to the premium build quality of the original SX-70 model, but they're just a little bit more versatile than the SX-70s were. Now this is a Polaroid 600 image with the classic white frame and kind of square picture. It's just iconic and everybody knows it. And this is the Polaroid SX-70 with this classic kind of white frame and more square type image. It's just iconic and just everybody knows it. Okay, so SX-70 film and 600 film are pretty much identical. Now the big difference between the two though is that the 600 film has an ISO of closer to 600 and the SX-70 film has an ISO of about 100. So 600 ISO is a much higher ISO which means it's better suited for darker situations. This also means that if you put SX-70 100 ISO film into your 600 camera you will get an underexposed image. So that's really important to remember when you're buying film. So these are the different types of Polaroid 600 cameras. The Polaroid Sun 660 which is this classic box-like design. The Polaroid Impulse, which looks more like a classic one-step design instead of the box-like folding ones. This Polaroid One-Step Express, which is also a bit like the box-like design. The Polaroid One, which is also more in line with the Impulse and the one-step designs. And a Polaroid One-Step Autofocus. So those are just a few types of Polaroid cameras that I personally own. But again, like the SX-70 One-Steps, there are literally dozens of different designs on these from over the years. So the 600 cameras are all basically the same camera and they just share the same basic features amongst them. A lot of them are these more boxy looking cameras and these are kind of the classic ones with a viewfinder at the back and this pop-up section at the front. Now one of the significant parts about the 600 cameras is that almost every version of these cameras have a built-in flash as opposed to the SX-70 models which all had a slot on the top of them to take an external flash. There is one model called the One Step 600 that needed 600 flash bars for its flash but these flashes are difficult to get now and with so many other 600 cameras with flashes built in, they're actually best to avoid. Now these cameras, unlike the SX-70 folding models, are non-reflex. So you look through a viewfinder here and you see out this window here beside the lens and that gives you an approximation of what the lens is seeing. Most of them don't have too many focus options, but some of them actually do have the sonar unit on the side for autofocus, like the SX-70 models and the Spectre models. I talk more about the sonar autofocus in the SX-70 video, but as a brief explanation, it emits a signal that that bounces off of the closest thing and back to the lens, and then the lens focuses on that subject. Now when these units work, it's actually not a bad system. Some cameras though do have a little slider on the front, and this allows you to slide a piece of plastic in front of the lens to get a little bit closer to your subject. Now the quality of this isn't always the best, so usually you don't wanna to get too much closer than four feet with most of these cameras. Now the standout versions of these cameras in the 600 series are the SLR 680s and the SLR 690s. These are the most premium versions of these cameras and they're styled off of the folding SX-70 model design. They are reflex cameras, so you can actually see through the lens, they have manual and sonar focus and a built-in flash. So if you really want something special when you're shooting that 600 film, try and seek out one of those SLR 680s or 690s. But because they are such a premium camera, they are also some of the most expensive Polaroid cameras out there. And they're also not easy to find. So all 600 cameras have a shutter button and some of these box like ones have the shutter button on the side and they actually have two. Now if you press the front shutter button, this will fire the camera using the flash. You can also press down this button behind it and this will fire the camera without the flash. Now I would like to say that Polaroid cameras can be a little bit strange sometimes, so they don't always work the way that you would think they should. So for example, this camera that I have does have these two buttons on the side for the shutter options, but it doesn't work the way that it should. So if I press the button at the front of the camera, it will fire with the flash. And if I press the button behind that one, it will also fire with the flash, even though it shouldn't. So sometimes Polaroid cameras can just be a little weird. So just like SX-70 and Spectre cameras, all the 600 cameras have the film slot at the front here. 
and this opens with a little slider on the side. Now inside you have all the standard components. You have the metal rollers at the front, which you should clean often with some rubbing alcohol and paper towel. This can help to eliminate chemical buildup from shooting Polaroids over time and can help to eliminate any problems you might be having with your pictures. At the very back, you also have the pick arm and the pick arm is the component which helps to push the film out through the rollers of your camera when it's ejecting. And if you're ever getting a Polaroid camera that isn't ejecting the film properly, you can get something long and bend that arm back down a little bit just to make sure that it's catching the film the way that it should be. There's also usually a label at the front of the camera inside the film door which will tell you exactly what kind of film these types of cameras take. That way you can open it up and make sure that you're either buying 600 or SX70 or Spectra film for the camera that you own. So for SX70, Spectra and 600 cameras all Polaroid cartridges are basically the same. They're plastic and they contain this dark slide at the top so that you're not exposing your first image when you take it out of the box. And at the bottom of the pack is the battery which powers your camera. And these have two slots on the bottom to make contact when you put them into the camera. So all these vintage Polaroid cameras don't require any sort of special battery or double A's or triple A's or anything. They just use the battery in the bottom of the pack. But currently Polaroid Originals also makes I-type film which doesn't have this battery and it's used for newer types of cameras which have a built-in rechargeable battery. So just make sure to be careful when you're buying film for your vintage cameras that you're not buying I-type film. So with our film door open we can insert our new pack of film close the door and it will spit out the dark slide. Now, as something's ejecting out of these 600 cameras, it does have a folding frog tongue, which is a foil-like material that unravels to protect your image for the first few seconds that it's ejecting from the camera from the light. Polaroids are still a little bit sensitive during the first few seconds of their lifespan when they're ejecting from the camera. So it's important to either put them face down on something or in a pocket or just somewhere a little bit dark so that you can protect it and it doesn't get messed up when it's developing. But after the first minute or so, it's safe to flip up and look at and even watch develop. It's also really important to note that Polaroid cameras also contain film counters on the back. Now all film counters on these cameras start at 10 and work their way down to zero as you shoot through a pack of film. Old school Polaroid packs all contain 10 images in each pack, but the newer Impossible Project and Polaroid Originals film only contain eight shots in a pack. So anytime you look at the film counter for reference, just subtract two from whatever it says so that you can keep track of how many you still have left in a pack in your camera. Most of these 600 cameras also do have an exposure compensation slider on the front, which means that you can either overexpose or underexpose your image just a little bit. But that's about it in terms of manual control that you have over exposure. So Polaroid Originals is currently making 600 film for all those old school cameras. And they're doing it in both black and white and color, as well as with some options for some different colored frames and even dual chrome for some more fun experimental results. They also make their One Step 2 camera, which takes both the 600 film as well as the new iType film, which doesn't have the battery in it. In my experience, Polaroid 600 cameras are usually the easiest and the cheapest to find at thrift stores. So if you're looking to try and get into Polaroid film for the very first time, you should start with the 600 cameras because they're cheap, they're easy to find, and if one breaks or doesn't work, then you shouldn't be out too much if you have to try and find another one. They're also great for parties and they have built-in flashes and they're really just classic looking cameras and they're just fun to have around. And they're really what I would recommend if you're trying to get into Polaroids for the very first time. Thank you guys so much for checking this out and I really hope that you enjoyed and learned a little bit more about what to expect when you're picking up a 600 camera for the very first time. And subscribe if you haven't done so already as I continue to post all sorts of analog content every week about different formats, cameras, and histories, motion picture, still photography, and instant film like this. Thanks so much and I'll see you guys soon.